You know, every now and then I think to myself, how ironic is it that Shawn Michaels and Triple H at one time were running around causing havoc throughout the WWE as members of D-Generation X. And now fast forward to 2024 and the two of them are practically running all programming across WWE TV. With NXT Heatwave considered to be a massive success, not only because of the in-ring competition, but also in building anticipation for future episodes of NXT. Let's take a look at how Shawn Michaels has created NXT to be one of the best weekly programming in wrestling today. But before we begin the video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with all the pro wrestling content that is produced on this channel. Believe it or not, there's still a great number of viewers who are not subscribed to the channel, so in order to see the channel continue to grow, please consider giving this channel a subscribe. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. If you're watching this video, then you probably already know that Ethan Page is the newest NXT champion in a finish that emulated much like the Backlash 2007 finish, which featured Randy Orton, Edge, Shawn Michaels, and John Cena. We saw Ethan Page manage to eke out a victory in a very entertaining, competitive, and just overall fun Fatal 4-Way matchup. But that got me thinking, how many times have we seen something from Shawn Michaels' past being reintroduced into today's NXT brand. Shawn Michaels has managed to bring back a lot of his greatest hits from his career and reinventing them in a way that not only new fans can be introduced to compelling and creative ways to create wrestling moments, but also that rewards long-term wrestling fans who realize and recognize what has been done with the past. I think that was very evident in the ending of the Fatal 4-Way at Heat Wave. Not only did we see multiple stars, one in Javon Evans who has a bright future ahead of him, solidified stars in Sean Spears and Ethan Page, as well as a rising star in Trick Williams. But this wasn't the only time that Shawn Michaels has managed to reach into his bag of tricks and reintroduce them onto NXT TV. We've seen it as recently as the Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes feud, which very much emulated the, the moments that Shawn had spent with Diesel and Triple H. I personally think it follows more in line with the Diesel and Shawn Michaels partnership, one, because of the presentation. Look at the way that these two tag teams stand up against one another. It very much resembles that of the Diesel and Shawn Michaels era, where one was a little smaller of a wrestler, but had all the attention because of the athleticism and the personality. And over time, the much larger superstar became popular, reaching success that pretty much got in the envy of Shawn Michaels or Carmelo Hayes in this instant. Both Shawn Michaels and Carmelo Hayes were a part of the mid-card scene, one winning the Intercontinental Championship, the other winning the North American Championship. Both tag teams were in the tag team hunt, until eventually they both reached the main event status, having one of the best matches of their respective years. You could even sprinkle in a little bit of the Triple H and Shawn Michaels feud from 2002 when Carmelo Hayes attacked Trick Williams and it became a little bit of a whodunit. Who had attacked Trick Williams until eventually it was revealed to be Carmelo Hayes. Very much in the vein that was done with Triple H and Shawn then, it was reintroduced in NXT this year. Another tag team that experienced a little bit of the Diesel and Shawn Michaels treatment was Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Obviously, again, when you look at the size difference, one being a Shawn Michaels size, the other being a Diesel size, competing for the tag team championships until eventually one would become world champion and they feuded over those titles. I look at it in the sense that if it's not broken, why fix it? And Shawn Michaels has done a great job of creating something old and redirecting it into something new. One of the more obvious and evident examples of that was back in 2021 when Jordan Devlin, obviously known as JD McDonough now, was the cruiserweight champion at the same time as Santos Escobar. There was two cruiserweight champions. So how did they decide to rectify this in crowning one cruiserweight champion? What else by having a ladder match for both titles? In essence, Shawn Michaels would even arrive introducing a ladder signifying a little bit of a tribute to the WrestleMania 10 matchup between Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels himself. With a little bit of nods and a little bit of honoring the past, Shawn Michaels continues to reintroduce ideas that he himself has experienced. It's not only relegated to just the men, the women's division have also experienced these things as well. Look no further than Toxic Attraction. Gigi Dolan and JC Jane had been a tag team for quite some time, but by introducing themselves into the segment with Bailey, the Hello Ding Dong segment, this opened the door for a heel turn. 
very similar to the barbershop when Shawn Michaels would turn on Marty Jannetty. Two longtime tag teams finally breaking apart in very similar fashion. Not only did Shawn throw his partner Marty Jannetty into the barbershop window, but JC Jane delivers a super kick to Gigi Dolan and throwing her right into the door of the set. And if you remember far back enough, Roxanne Perez back in 2023 had a little bit of a health scare. It seemed that during her matchup defending that NXT Women's Championship, she would faint causing her to vacate the title. And what does that remind you of? In 1995, when Shawn Michaels was fighting Owen Hart, and he also suffered a moment where he was fainting and would go unconscious. Anytime you look at the level of success that NXT has sustained, or these memorable moments that are being created, it is hard to not go back and look into the archives of Shawn Michaels' career and realize that they're reintroducing a lot of the things that we've already seen. For better or for worse, some people might want to argue that it's unoriginal, whereas me and myself, I would like to think it's honoring the past that has already happened and rewarding the fans that have stayed for so long. Obviously, I know I'm missing some examples. Please sound off in the comments below on what are some of your favorite moments in NXT that have emulated the career of Shawn Michaels. Please also make sure to like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with all the pro wrestling content that is produced on this channel. And until the next video, I will see you then.